before the video starts, I just want to say I'm very sorry if this is late. There have been issues with editing and uploading and all that, but she's here and I hope that you enjoy. Welcome back everyone. I hope everyone's staying healthy and happy and finding joy where they can um, with Keeping in Zoe's theme. This section here is going to be my little display area for pictures that I will be showing you. Also, I apologize for the background noise. Um, the room that I filmed in has a lot of monitors and a lot of fans, but hopefully that doesn't impact the audio too much. This is another endangered species spotlight. I'm going to be talking about a cute little animal called the woily. Um, it's also known as the brush-tailed betong. Also, I do have this for notes. Um, it's also known as the brush-tailed betong, uh, the brush-tailed rat kangaroo, and its scientific name is Betongia penicillata. A quick side note, there's actually two subspecies of Betongia penicillata. There's Betongia penicillata penicillata, which is extinct, and Betongia penicillata ogilvii, which is the one that I will be talking about in this video. Uh, they're small, nocturnal marsupials covered in grey fur. Um, and for those that don't know, a marsupial is a mammal that uh, gives birth to its uh, baby before it's fully developed, and then the baby continues to develop in the mother's pouch. So, um, out of the 334 species of marsupial in the world, Australia has 235. 99 species are found in Central and South America, and there is one in North America, which is the opossum. And they can also be found in Asian countries like Indonesia or Papua New Guinea. Uh, so basically, they're endemic to Australasia and the Americas. Just to give you an idea of what some marsupials are, kangaroos, wombats, possums, koalas, those kinds of things. So I know the name rat kangaroo isn't the cutest name, but it doesn't actually look like a rat. <laughs> uh, they belong to a family of kangaroo-like marsupials. Um, the family that I'm referring to is uh, the family Petoridae, I think, and that is the uh, family that these sort of marsupials belong to. It's all under three kilograms, um, hence rat kangaroo. And woilies reach a max weight of about 1850 grams, so 1.85 kilograms. From the head to the base of their tail, these guys grow between 28 to 45 centimeters, about the size of a guinea pig. Um, and their hind feet are longer than the entire length of their head. On top of this, their tail adds another 29 to 36 centimeters to their length, but they can fit in the palm of your hand. They also have what's called a prehensile tail, which is basically an extra limb. They can use it to carry materials for nesting and stuff like that. Um, and when they sleep, they also often wrap these around their necks to keep warm. Uh, Woilies live for about six to eight years, but sometimes longer in zoos, up to maybe 14 years. Um, and their lifespan is quite short, but during this time, they are very fluffy. They mate all year round, and as soon as the mother gives birth, it mates again straight away. Female woilies produce an average of three babies a year, which is awesome because woilies play a super important role in the ecosystem. Because of their small size, they create nests on the ground in or near thickets of vegetation. Uh, they're integral in seed dispersal and uh, increasing soil and nutrient turnover with, it, with their diggings. Their diet primarily consists of uh, tubers, bulbs and seeds, but they love fungi. Uh, and because fungi are such a huge aspect of their diet, they do a lot of digging with their really strong fork claws. Uh, their digging helps spread fungal spores and seeds which is a major factor in the regeneration of vegetation in the ecosystem. But unfortunately, these little guys are critically endangered. Uh, for reference, critically endangered is the lowest level of endangered that you can get before an animal becomes extinct in the wild, which basically means that none of those animals can be found in the wild and they can only be found in you know, zoos or rehabilitation centers, places like that. Due to a recovery program, Royley's Due to a recovery program, woilies were uh, removed from the threatened fauna list in 1996, but the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, I think, the IUCN, um, re-listed re them as critically endangered in 2008 due to another sudden decline in population after 2001. Uh, in the last 15 years, woily population 
have declined from 225,000 to 10 to 20,000, which is a 90% decrease. These animals co <sighs> Once upon a time, these animals occupied more than 60% of mainland Australia. Uh, their preferred environment is open forests or woodland with low clump with low clumped understory of vegetation. They could be found in Western Australia, Northern Territory, South Australia, New South Wales, and Victoria. Uh, but now they're only found in small pockets of Western Australia and offshore islands in South Australia. In that map, it does show a sanctuary in New South Wales where there is a population of woilies, but obviously this is a sanctuary, um, so they would be present in captivity and not in the wild. Um, so it doesn't, it's not a natural population per se. They were originally considered to be pests. Uh, so actually they were killed in huge numbers for a reward um, with huge numbers, up to 3 million individuals. Um, and as with many endangered, in spe as of many endangered species, a large threat um, is uh, land clearing for agriculture. Woolies are also under immense threat from alien species such as red foxes and feral cats. With the recovery program that I mentioned earlier, it was largely targeted at red foxes. Um, because of the fox baiting campaigns, it was really successful, which is why it was taken off the threatened fauna list. Um, and one of the reasons that they were able to survive, woolies were able to survive in certain areas is because um, it suggested that plants, certain plants in those areas possess the toxins that are also found in the toxic bait traps that can be used against um, red foxes. And so when the woilies ate these plants and the foxes ate the woilies, they sort of ingested the secondary poisoning. Not only that, but they also protected the woilies with a form of cover. So that was really good. People were unsure of why the second decline occurred in 2001, um, but it's hugely suspected that disease plays a really large role in this because a scientist found that there were two parasitic blood infestations among woilies, which have been a huge thing. And there's also um, a role feral pigs play in uh, disease among woilies. But on top of this, predation and habitat destruction are still two major factors in uh, the endangered status of woilies. So what's being done about all this? Um, World, War World, World Wildlife Foundation is uh, working to reintroduce locally extinct World Wildlife WWF is working to reintroduce locally extinct species across 17,000 hectares of the southern York Peninsula over the next five years, starting with this little guy. According to WWF, around 27 native species have already become locally extinct to this area. Um, and I will link the website down below, but you can go to www.org.au forward slash rewild the York and read tons more about this. On the site, you can make a donation to the program, any amount you want. They do have a minimum of $2, but you can also fill out a fauna report if you think that you have seen a woily and send it to the Department of Parks and Wildlife Species and Communities branch. Uh, I'll link the form and the email down below. It's important for the government to know the distribution of these animals because it helps inform their decisions regarding the management of these species and in monitoring population trends. Um, this pretty much goes for any endangered species. If you live in an area where, with not with boilies but with other endangered species that you might have seen, like Zoe mentioned with the hairy Kwandong, there will probably be a form that you can fill out or something that you can uh, contact people with to let them know that you have seen this animal or plant or whatever it is. Unlike flora, like Zoe's hairy Kwandong, it's not as easy to, uh, as an individual, uh, aid this sort of extinction crisis because, um, you know, we don't want to go around just killing foxes and feral cats um, because that would be very bad. And because of that, these sort of two ways are the primary ways that you can help. Um, but, you know, even with the WWF's minimum donation of $2, those $2 can go a huge way. Um, but since I know it's not always possible to make donations, if you do live in an area that um, where these could be found, um, make sure that you keep an eye out for them and make sure that uh, if you do spot one or if you think you spot one, you fill out that form and you send an email. If you find yourself in a position where you can't do either of these things, uh, it'd be really good to do the trusted, tried and true, most effective way, raising awareness. Now, if you want to talk to your friends and family and tell them all about the cool new animal you learnt about today, 
that is really good and it really spreads awareness and lets everyone know that these animals do need our help. And as a parting fact, boilies communicate through their pee. Their well-developed sense of smell allows them to communicate through scent using urine, feces, and rubbing their scent glands. That's all I have for you guys this week. I hope this was something exciting and new for everyone. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and responsible, and I will see you next week. As always, imagination.